Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to the channel and welcome to a video that is being made at your request. After I did the scenery scratch build videos and I wired up all the LEDs in all the buildings, a few of you sort of pulled me up on the fact that I'd rather glossed over the wiring up the LEDs bit and said, can you just do a basics video on wiring LEDs into buildings for your scenery and how you do it? So this is what I'm going to do. Now there's a caveat here. This video is for people who don't know what they're doing and they just want the basic overview. If you're one of these people who's a geeky electronics engineer, who's not going to like it if everything isn't exactly technically accurate, switch off now because I'm not addressing you, I'm addressing the other people. Cool. With that out of the way, on we go. For the purposes of this exercise, LEDs in my world come from eBay and they come in bags of 10 for about £2.50. If you buy twice as many, it's not twice as much. There's an economy of scale here. The more you buy, the cheaper they get. LEDs in the realms of this world that we're in here come in two kinds. The old school, traditional, big 5mm LEDs with a coloured lens on them and so on and so on. These are kind of quite fragile. They need you to give them three volts. If you give them much more than three volts, they blow. So depending on what power supply you're using, you might blow these up unless you start wiring extra resistors onto the end of them and things, and it can all get quite complicated. So my advice is, to begin with, steer clear of these ones. You probably don't need them. They're gonna probably cause you more hassle than good. Now the other kind of LEDs that you'll find quite a lot of on eBay are these little three millimeter ones. They come in two kinds with a dome top like this one or with a flat top depending on kind of what sort of effect you're trying to get. They come in varieties but they all essentially look the same. They're small and they're clear. The color they illuminate is not part of the fitting. Now these are somewhat more durable than the other ones. These are usually rated on eBay at 3.75 volts, but it's a bit of a lie because USB runs at five volts and I wire a load of these up and run five volts through them and they don't blow up. Now, again, these come in two varieties. That is to say the bare LED with just the two legs on it or these pre-wired ones, which have a red and a black. Now for the purposes of this, all LEDs are the same. They have a long leg and a short leg. The long leg is the positive. In this case, the red. The short leg is the negative or black. That's all you really need to know about these LEDs. They're cheap, they're fairly durable. You can abuse them a bit. And sometimes they come pre-wired which is handy. So on to the next bit, which is how I power all of this. Well, as I say, I use USB. I tend to use one of these little USB um, hub junction boxes. You can either plug mains power in there, or if you've got one of these lovely British sockets that's got a USB outlet on it, you can plug it into the wall, get your power, and then all of these will switch on and off. I don't know if you can see the blue lights coming on here as I switch these on and off, but that then becomes a switch box into which you plug other USB leads. And then it's just a case of getting this wire and attaching it to these LEDs, which is what I'm going to do next. So as promised, here we have three LEDs and a USB wire. We need to join them all together so you can wire all the LEDs up and switch them on and off. It's very simple. In terms of the LEDs, you need to get all of the reds and all of the blacks and join them all together. So I'm just gonna twist all these up so they are joined together. Now 
And you can do this. I mean, I'm using three. I mean, don't go mad. Don't do a hundred, but you can do six, eight, probably ten. You don't have to worry about it. Yes, you're wiring things together and changing an overall resistance, but with the power and the, you know, or the lack of power that's going through all of this, you're not making a lot of difference. And like I say, these LEDs are quite forgiving. So here I've got three and I've wired the three reds and the three blacks together just by twisting them all up. That'll do for this bit for now. The LED that the USB wire, too many three letter abbreviations here. The USB wire, we just have to get savage with. Get rid of that. Now, if I pull off the outer black insulation inside this wire, there's just two wires. Because this is a charging wire, it's not anything else. The data ones have four wires in, but usually there's a red and a black, which is all that matters. And in this situation, it's kind of a red and I think that one's a white. So you just need to strip enough of that off. And then again, because it's all very low voltage stuff, really. I'll strip these wires back. Now the great bit about this is because this is a sort of pinky wire and a white wire I don't really know which one's positive and which one's neutral but because these are LEDs if you wire them up the wrong way around they won't blow up they just won't do anything so if I try the white one on the black there we are so that's the way around it needs to go. I need to do the pinky one to the red wires and the white one to the black wires and the LEDs will light up. So in order to join these together, obviously I'm going to solder them. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this little piece of heat shrink plastic, which does exactly what it says. It's a big wide diameter plastic tube if you heat it up, it will shrink. So I'll slide it over the top of these wires first. Just get it right out of the way. And then there's a little bit of a long running soldering on camera thing with Marty Ford from Two Lines. So I shall switch my soldering iron on and we'll do some soldering on camera. So I'm just going to tin these wires as they say which is just coat a little bit of solder along each wire and it's just a case of joining this one to this one and this one to this one and the easiest way to do that once you've Put some solder on each wire is just load a little bit up onto the soldering iron and now that little bit of heat shrink that I pushed up there before can now go over that join and then when we apply a little bit of heat to it this will shrink around the cable And then the two are insulated. If I was doing it properly and actually installing it, I'd do the other one as well. 
but that's not going to short out that's the point so that really should be it plug this into the power switch it on and it really is that simple you can do this even if you didn't think you could you don't even have to be very good with the soldering just put some blobs on it's not going to matter as long as it's stuck together it's not going to matter there you are and you can light your buildings as always thanks for taking the time to watch one of my videos if you liked it you will find a button specifically for that please subscribe to the channel it's free and it really does help and if you hit the bell you'll get a notification the next time i post a video